Hello guys, this is Navin Reddy. So today we'll talk about EJB. So we'll see the example of EJB. So before going for EJB, uh, we'll start with servlet. Uh, we'll add two numbers using servlet and then we'll try to use bin in servlet and then we'll go for towards EJB. So let's start with that. Uh, let's open a, let's get a new project and we'll create a web project this time. So we'll say Java web and web applications. Then we can say next. We'll say this application as demo EJB and then next uh, we'll go for glassfish server because it provides the EJB features and then we'll say next uh, we'll, we'll not go for any framework now and then we'll say finish now once you got your project what we'll do is we'll create a basic HTML page again we already we have a home page here which is the index.html so what we'll do we'll take two numbers from user because we want to add two numbers so uh, so we'll ask user to enter two numbers we'll say enter first number and then we'll give an input text as input type equal to text and uh -oh, spell missed it's text and then we'll say a name for that text we'll say t1 that's it now since we need two text fields so we'll do some code reuse here so it's end uh, this time we'll say t2 and enter second number and then what next we require a button here again we want this to be come on new line so we'll say br for break line and then br and then we need an input button so we'll say submit input type equal to submit that's it we'll use the default name okay uh, now if you call if you click on this submit it, it should call a form right and that's why we require a form tag here so we'll say form uh, in this it will call uh, we'll create a servlet as add servlet okay and the method will I'll be using here is post and then we'll say form close so this is your HTML page when you run this code now and when you click on this button it will call this add servlet that means we have to create a servlet here so we'll right click on your project and then uh, we'll select a servlet uh, we'll name this servlet as add servlet and then we'll, uh, we'll not go for any package name so we'll say next again it's your choice to go with web.xml or you can use annotations so this time I'm not checking this uh, checkbox here I'm going for annotation type of coding so we'll say finish so this is your servlet uh, for simplicity let me remove this comments all these comments and okay let me give it a first thing okay so what we have you have all these packages let me import this in one by one uh, this is your uh, servlet as add servlet now to mention it as servlet, we have an annotation called as Adelaide Web Servlet, which specified this. The below class is servlet. Uh, if you call a pattern like slash add servlet, it will call this servlet. Again, uh, if you if you are changing the request type here, if you change the request type, you have to change the uh, pattern here. Now again, since we are using an inbuilt class, so what we do is we have to import the package. So we'll say. Uh, again you can click here and import or you can just give a shortcut called as control shift i it will import the package now since we are working with a service type of thing so we have to go for either do post or do get since we are uh, since we are working with a method called as post so we have to define as do post which will accept two parameters as http servlet request req and then http servlet response We'll say res. Simple, right? And then we have to import the package. So Control Shift I it will import the package. Now, uh, now uh, we see again we have to accept the details from client and then we'll process the details and then we'll send that details to clients, right? If, if, if client sends two and three, so we have to add two and three and we have to return five. For that, since we are going to return a value, we'll require object of print writer because it will have a method called as uh, print ln so we'll say print writer out equal to and uh, our response object will help us to create that object so we'll say uh, get writer so there is a chances that I will get an error so you can click here 
on this bubble and then it will give you suggestion like uh, you have to import the package uh, next error should be it will throw an exception so it's a check checked exception so we have to click on this and say add throw clause so you can see we have an io exception here okay next we have to accept details from client now so to accept the details we require two variables we'll say int i uh, in which the request will come from uh, request or not request is rdq dot get parameter this is how you take input from your html page in servlets and we'll say t1 so we'll, we'll get our data from this t1 so i will come from this t1 and j will come from this t2 but when i say get parameter it will always give me a string string value we have to convert it into integer value so we'll say integer dot pass int brackets okay and then we'll do the same thing for j so we'll say copy and paste this is your j and this time we'll say t2 now what next uh, we have to add these two numbers so we'll take a third variable as int k and we'll say i plus j okay and then once it is done you have to print the value so we'll say out dot print ln and we'll pass k now this will print your k on client machine right again we'll, we'll see i will say add uh, addition is colon it is k simple right now how to run this file just go to your index.js index.html and from this let me remove this comments no need for comments here now to compile it or run it you have to right click on your html and say run it will take some time because the, uh, it will take some time for the deployment this is the first time i'm running this code so it will take some time approximately 10 seconds depending upon your system configuration Uh, yeah, since we are working with Glassfish, it will it will activate the Glassfish server, and now it is deploying your project to Glassfish server. As I said, depending upon your configuration, it will take some time. So it's taking more than ten seconds now. Don't worry, eventually we'll be getting the output. okay so till then we'll do a quick revision so we have we have created a form in html in this we have two input text as t1 and t2 and then you have a button so once you click on this button it will call your add servlet in which we have to create a servlet by extending that servlet with http servlet and then since we are working with some type of uh, service either we can use do get or do post depend upon your request depend upon your request you have to use uh, do get or do post here and then uh, since we are printing it on a, a client machine we have to take we require object of print writer and then we have to take input from i and j and then we have to calculate uh, the value of k which is i plus j and then you have to print the value of k now if i run this code see this is my html page so this you can see this is uh, this is the uh, local host which means the ip address of my machine and then this is the port number glass which using and then this is my project name and this is my page so if i say 45 i already have some numbers 67 submit and the answer is addition is 112 right that's the answer but what we say is this is your actual uh, server which which gives you response but normally you should divide your work you should you should create something called as uh, methods so if you convert this thing into like a, a more efficient more efficient code you have to use a method here which means i uh, will define a method called as public void add which will take two parameters int i comma int int j and then what we'll do is we'll say uh, uh we'll do one thing we'll return this we'll, we'll say int i will return return int and here i will say i plus j so what it means uh, some something will call this add which passing two parameters i and j it will do the addition and it will return right so now here what we can do is instead of writing i plus j we can just directly say add i comma j 
So it will give the same output, right? Let me do, uh, let me run this. So let's pass uh, 43 and 11 and the output is addition 54, right? But this time we are working with, we are working with this, um, uh, this method called as add. Now what again we say is, uh, instead of having your business logic, now this part is business logic, instead of having a business logic into a servlet, what we can do is we can use, we can make this code as reusable. That means in other, in other servlet, if you need the same code, so what you can do is you can create a bean, which is reusable. So how to create bean? It's very simple. Just create a normal class and we'll name this class as add bean and we'll uh, give a package name as, uh, uh, we'll say EJB and then finish. Again, this is not a EJB exactly. This is just a bean concept. Also, what beans means if you have a variable like int i comma j and k and if these variables are private now if you create object of this bean by default it will become a if you create object of this class it, be, it will become a bean but for that you need some getters and setters right it's because to access private variables you require getter setters so how to introduce getter setters right click we have insert code uh, we'll say getter and setter we require a setter for all these three variables and generate now we have all these getters and setters right now since after that we have to add also so we'll say public void add and then we can directly say k equal to i plus j now so this is your bin right so normal uh, we have three variables we will do add we we'll do addition we have three variables we have getters and setters for everything and then last is we record a method called as add which will add this value of i and j and save it in k. Now the changes here will be we don't need this method now because we are separating the logic with presentation with actual uh, uh, server. So instead of calling this now, now we have to set the value. We have first we have to get object of this bean. So how to get object we'll say add bean obj equal to new add bean. Uh, again, we have to import the package because we are working with EJB package here. So we'll say uh, uh, no option for. Okay, it's very simple. We just it's not working. It's some mistake. Okay, let me just uh, import the package my, by myself. We'll say import. It's EJB. Uh oh, let me just remove this. Let me just change the package name because we have some inbuilt package in Java as EJB. So we'll say this package is our beans, not beans, uh, my bean to be very specific. We'll say refactor. Now it is easy to import the package because there, there, will, be no, there will not be any conflict with this. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, my bean dot add bean. Okay, now what next? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll say, uh, now we have to set the value of i, right? So we'll say obj dot set i. Now we, we cannot directly use i, we have to use set i because which is a public method because your variables are private. So you cannot access your private variables directly. So we have to use methods, which is getters and setters. And then you have pay, uh, here we can pass uh, j and then uh, we'll say obj dot add which will set the value of k as the value of i and j so if your i value is 5 and j value is 6 the add will do addition of 5 and 6 and it will save that 11 number in in uh, in k so now we need k also we'll say int k and obj dot get k it will give me the value of k now and then you can print the value of k here Simple, right? Now, let me just run this code. So, let me go here and again, just for change, let, uh, we'll say addition using bean. Okay, let me run this code now. And it's 56. Oh, it's already there. And 90. Submit the addition using bean is 146. Now this time what we are doing is we are actually using a bean here. We are, we are using a bean here, right? 
But the problem is, uh, think about our uh, distributed systems. You you have a server on different machine and you have your beans on different machines. That means server don't know the implementation of beans, right? When you say this new add bean, it gives you something called as dependency. That means you should know your implementation. You have to create the object, right? There are chances that you'll be having your you'll be having your uh, you'll be having your reference you'll be having your reference on different machine and your object on different machine at that point of time what you need is you don't know what the object will be so you need help from someone to remove this dependency and that dependency you can remove with the help of e j b which means you just have to concentrate on reference creation i will take care of your object creation right so let's implement EJB with the same example now instead of using a normal bean this time we have to use a EJB for that uh, we'll right click on your package and we'll say uh, now EJB when we talk about EJB it can be of three types uh, it can be session also two types basically it can be session or it can be uh, message driven beans uh, so but for this example we'll go for a session and we'll name this as add EJB and then in this we have three options we, one is stateless stateful and singleton i uh, will focus on stateless here and then we'll say finish remove we'll remove the con we'll remove the comments and then this one also now what more important here is all your ejb will have an annotation so depend upon which type of ejb you're using you have different annotations so if you are using a stateful uh, session bin so you have to do right here say stateful right now again, we have the same code here, which we have done in bin, which means I need a private i, j and k. For this, I need get a setter, so we'll say uh -oh, private int i, and then we need get a setter, so we'll say insert code, getters and setters for all the variables generate. I got the getter setter, I also need a method called as public void add. Uh, which is k equal to i plus j uh -oh, it's i plus j and then uh, what we'll do is we'll say okay this is this is your ejb part now to use this ejb here instead of using a bean because i don't want to implement and since i want to increase the scope i will say add ejb here and we'll create the object name as obj now this is your reference i don't want to create a object of that right i don't want to create the object i will ask ejb to create the object first we have to import this so we'll say uh, import now now if you run this code it will not work because we don't have an object for this i need someone to create ops create me an object right and that someone is your ejb you just have to give an annotations for this object as ejb so it will create an object of for this a add ejb class so again we have to import the package uh, it, now see this package below this uh, class belongs to our package called as ejb okay so now we have done with this we, we are not creating any object by ourselves we are asking ejb to give me an object now if you run this code let me do some modification we'll say using ejb now if i run this code Uh, it's 76 and we'll say 99 and the addition using EJB is 179 and that's the advantage of using EJB we are not dependent on the implementation we just we should just know the uh, class name and the reference right that's it that uh, using that we can work with EJB so I hope this uh, this video has helped you in EJB concept uh, do subscribe for the further videos thank you so much